I'm shocked and alarmed about this issue that beekeepers are experiencing. And a lot of them, most of them don't know what's happening. It all has to do with the queen. A lot of people think that their bees died because of bad winters or because of vero destructor mite. And they say, yeah, the winter got them or I should have looked for mites better. Really, oftentimes, it's not the winter. It's not mites like we think. A lot of beekeepers, after I talked to them a while, I realized what the problem was. The problem was, it was a queen event that happened. Stay tuned today, I'm gonna tell you about three scenarios that usually takes place to most of us in most of our hives during the course of our beekeeping season. And what happens when one of these types of events takes place, it becomes detrimental to the colony being able to prepare and survive the winter. Let's get right into it today, guys. Thanks for joining me. If this is your first time to join me, I'm David Burns. Welcome to my channel. If you're a loyal subscriber and coming back for more of my great content, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Now, a lot of times I talk to a lot of beekeepers who are wrestling with why their bees died late summer, mid fall, late fall, early winter, even before it got cold enough to really blame it on winter. And they're perplexed. They say, gosh, I did everything by the book. I treated for mites. I tested for mites regularly. Kept my mite levels low like I'm supposed to. I even went so far as to feed them. I fed them in the fall. I fed them in the winter. Whenever I was doing everything you're supposed to do and my bees still died before winter came or maybe in, this, in the early part of winter. And they say, what happened? What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? You know what? Guys, listen to this. This is so fascinating to me. After I've talked to these people and asked a lot of questions, you know what I realized the problem was? It was a queen event that took place. That's right, we, we call this a queen event. In other words, an event took place that involved the queen not performing well or not performing at all in the case of her dying. So today, I wanna to talk to you about three queen events that take place. I want you to listen closely I have this series going on right now all about queens and I'm excited about it. And this is gonna help you realize that as beekeepers, we really can't just rely on the queen always performing perfectly. I wanna tell you right now, tell you the, the secret that's coming up in the future of this video in, in just a minute, but I wanna go ahead and tell you now to get you kind of warmed up for it. It's really important that you as a beekeeper start to play with the idea that you really need to have a backup queen on hand. Now, I don't care if you have one hive, uh, 10 hives, or 100 hives. You need to have a plan in place where if you have a queen event in the beekeeping season that you take quick action. I believe the best way to do that is learning how to raise your own queens, banking them, holding them in place for when you have a queen event, you, you, you just know to put one in there, replace her. But I'll tell you, so many beekeepers, they're brand new, they don't know what to do, they don't even, they're having a hard time trying to find the queen. Hey, leave a comment below if you have a hard time finding the queen. I, I get that. Gosh, it took me years to be able to really figure out how do I find my queen easily and quickly. You know, that's an art within itself. I, I understand that, I get that. You don't have to find your queen every time to see how she's performing. Instead, you can look at your brood pattern that the queen is laying. You can look for eggs. Eggs are hard to see. You have to put some reader glasses on or magnifying glass out there to see or take a picture of the brood, bring it back inside, put it on your computer and start looking at it and evaluating. Uh, it, or do you see eggs? Is the queen laying eggs? If you see eggs, your queen is fine. So you don't have to hunt through 60,000 bees and try to find one that is slightly different. <laughs> I get that. That's no fun for anybody. But you do need to learn to really evaluate your brood. And once you start seeing your brood, you can start um, determining the performance of your queen. What happens with many beekeepers, especially brand new beekeepers, they really don't understand what to look for. They're not sure about brood. They're not sure about eggs. And they're a little intimidated by the colony being so big sometimes as we get deeper in the summer and especially in the fall. Yeah, they just rather forego looking for eggs and looking for the queen 
because it's just too much to do. There's too many bees and it's, the bees are just all at home because there's not much of forage on in the fall. So a lot of beekeepers just say, you know what, uh, I, I'm going to trust the queen is good and all is well. And then they get into November, December, and all at once the colony is just totally gone. Or there's a bunch of dead bees on the bottom. They don't know what happened. What happened? I was treating for mites. I had plenty of room for, you know. Well, it's a queen event that took place that somehow you did not notice. This usually happens so often to almost every single colony every year. And that is when your queen fails She's just totally failing to lay the eggs that the hive wants her to. The colony is expecting a lot of eggs. She's failing. And what they do, they replace her. They kill her off and they raise a new queen. And listen, that sounds all hunky-dory. It sounds pretty cool. You get a brood break, maybe control some mites and all. You think, okay, that's good. They're going to pull it off. And here's what happens though even when they pull it off successfully. This is queen event number one that can cause your whole colony to eventually fail even before winter. This creates a gap in the different types of work that the bees do. Bees work in such a way where the work is staggered by age, by day's age. And so what happens is when there's a gap because something happened to the queen, they're replacing her, it's gonna take 30 days to get another queen in there laying well, get her mated and everything when they do it themselves. And so there's this brood gap that starts hurting the population. In other words, they don't have enough uh, nurse bees. The nurse bees are only nurse bees from day six through 12 approximately. And so that's only six or seven days and so you have a brood gap of 30 days. Look at that, you're losing out on nurse bees, bees that make wax at the proper ages of 12 to 17 days old, and, and it goes on and on. And so this has a catastrophic effect. This has like a domino effect, all the dominoes falling over in a negative way. And all at once these bees start really hurting. This whole colony starts not only having low populations, but not having workers at the right time to keep it going strong. And sometimes you don't even notice this. You, you open up your hive and it looks all good. You see bees, you know, you think everything's okay, but it's hard for us to tell where the gap is at. And so these bees can have very low populations. They can have this worker gap where bees are no longer to perform their task on the days they're supposed to when they're needed because of that low population, the low number of bees at the right age to do the work at the right time. 50% of the time, this drags the colony down. It really does. If you come out of this scenario with a very strong active colony and it's a, a very good queen that they, that they raise and you have a lot of nectar in your area, then the recovery is very favorable. You have a good chance of this colony just snapping back from the loss of that queen and all is good. But if you take one of those things out of the equation, like you don't have enough nectar in your area, or the queen that they raise, instead of laying 1,500 eggs a day, she's only putting about 600 out today because of a problem, was it mated well, something like that. Now it just keeps getting worse. But you keep looking at it and you keep thinking it's okay, it seems okay. It's dwindling down. It's really gonna show up eventually when you look in there and say, wow, these, these bees are low in number. Now, I wanna say this, a lot of you may just have one colony, and if you start out brand new with one colony, you really don't have anything else to compare it to. You kinda of start wondering, you, you just naturally think this is normal. But if you have two colonies that you start with, now you have one that's kinda of getting weaker and weaker, and you can tell because you have one that's acting normal. And a lot of people call me up and say, I've got two hives. And one is like super gigantic, they're like, superhero style like bees. This other one, I don't know, it's kinda not doing well. Now see, if they only had one colony, it would have been the weak one, they would have thought the weak one was doing well. Or this super duper hero hive, they think it's a super duper hero hive, it really is just an average hive. But because they're comparing it to a weak hive, they think it's a wonderful hive. But it's, that's what bees are supposed to do. So a lot of times we just read the scenario wrong if you just have one hive to compare it to. But this is a queen event that some of you probably experienced in the beekeeping season and you didn't notice it. You don't know it. Your bees are soon, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but your, your bees may soon perish and that's going to be why 
They never could recover from that queen event where they replaced her and they failed. Hey, get this. Sometimes they replace her and she does okay, but then they don't like her. They pick up on the fact she's not laying well. So guess what? After 30 days and she lays a few more eggs for the first time, they kill that one off. And now you're another 30 days out. Yeah, that happens all the time. It's very common. They keep trying to get a good queen on their own and now you've got 60 days without any brood. Now, if you go 30 days without the queen laying a thousand eggs a day, you're down 30,000 bees from one queen event if they recover. And that's three packages of bees, by the way. Now let's talk about queen event number two. This is an exciting series on queen rearing. Before I get into the next queen event that happens, I wanna tell you guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Little bobblehead David says, please subscribe. He appreciates it. And I, I do too. Give me a thumbs up. Wow, when you leave me a thumbs up, my, my YouTube channel just blows up. It does great on, on YouTube. Let me know you like the video. Let's get back to another queen event. We kind of hit on it a little bit. This is when they do produce a queen, but they produce a very poor queen. She's just not doing well at all. She didn't maybe get mated well enough. So she comes back to the hive after 30 days. She starts laying a little bit, but she's not doing well. Now, instead of replacing her, their fingers are crossed too, maybe. They think, well, you know, she's not doing too bad, so maybe we'll keep her. And they keep a poor queen. And you have spotty brood or not a lot of brood. Sometimes a brood pattern can be solid. There's just not much of it. And so you keep thinking, is my queen okay? Well, I see solid brood, but you don't see sheets and sheets and sheets of brood. You just see some brood. And it's hard for new beginners to evaluate, well, how much brood do I need to be seeing this time of the year? That's all uh, dependent upon the time of the year, how much nectar you have at that moment and so on. But sometimes a queen event, they produce a poor queen. And if you don't recognize that she's not laying as much brood as you know she should, you might let it go as well. So they let a poor queen continue, you let a poor queen continue, and now you go poorly with this poor queen into winter. And so it doesn't take long at all for those summer bees to perish, and since the poor queen didn't lay enough brood of winter physiology, now the colony quickly gets wiped out early by a cold snap in fall. Uh, leave a comment below if that's happened to you before. And so that's a scenario two, second scenario, of a queen event. I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna give you some really strategic ways in just a minute how to deal with this so you don't face this. This is all about queen rearing, people. So thanks for joining me on my series about queen rearing. Now, the third event that I wanna tell you about is when the queen fails totally. She just fails. I mean, she was in there, the brood was wonderful. Maybe you bought a new nook, maybe you bought a package all spring. This hive has looked so wonderful. You love it. You have such great thoughts and opinions about this hive. They're kind, they're gentle, they're making a lot of honey. You did a mite test. You, you don't see many mites at all. It's just so nice to work on. You feel like such a good beekeeper. You're so happy that things are working out so great. And you're so happy. It's just wonderful. You, you didn't know beekeeping could be this good. And you're like, gosh, this is so great. But all it takes is one event, one queen event, and maybe you're on a business trip, you know, two or three weeks away and you come back and uh-oh, something's wrong. It doesn't take much to interfere with that whole system that's supposed to run perfectly. Now, last week I was traveling. We had one event, one airplane event that happened, which was horrible. It's like a queen event happens, it's horrible in the hive. This event for me was horrible. I, I wasn't, I, delays, I missed the plane, I slept one whole day in an airport. I should get a trophy. Have you ever slept in an airport? Give me a, give me a comment below if you've ever slept on an airport floor trying to catch your flight out the next day. And guess what? I went five days without my luggage, five days without my YouTube gear, five days without my laptop that I make my uh, videos on. Oh, five whole days. It was an airport an airplane, a travel event. I've traveled around the world many times. I've traveled so much to different countries. I've never had anything like this happen. 
It's too bad, but hey, it happens. Just like with queens, things are gonna happen. And so you go out two or three weeks later to inspect again and, hmm, uh-oh, I don't see as much brood as I did a while back. You don't see any queen cells. You can't find the queen, you look everywhere, but maybe you missed her. Maybe you're thinking, well, she's in there, but I just can't see her. I got some kept over brood, but I don't see any eggs or larvae. And see, that's the trigger point for all of us. We need to be able to see all three stages of the brood, eggs, larvae, and pupae. Every time you inspect, every two weeks, you gotta see eggs, you gotta see the developing larvae, white, pearly, beautiful larvae developing, and you have to see pupae developing, capped over pupae. That's what you wanna see. If one of those is missing, and especially eggs or larvae, and the queen's not there. She died. The pupae can be still there, capped over, but since there's no larvae or no eggs, that means the queen died eight or nine days ago and no new brood is gonna come after that pupae hatches. So when the queen fails or totally dies and perishes, the colony maybe replaced her and when she took her mating flight, she could have gotten eaten by a dragonfly or a bird, very common. Queens sort of fly loud, they're, they're kind of obvious. I mean, birds and dragonflies don't have any problem eating bees in flight, but that, that, that queen, they can really pick her off. In some of our queen mating yards, it's like a swarm of dragonflies out there. Dragonflies are eating so many bees. Now, it's not gonna kill your colony, don't worry about it. It's gonna not be enough to really set your colony back. But for us who raise queens, that's a queen that I need mated. I need her to come back. I don't need her to disappear in the, in the claws of a dragonfly. They just fly through the air with like rakes. Dragonflies do, just raking in all those queens. And so when these bees are killed or eaten on their mating flight and they don't come back to the hive, guess what? The hive has no way to raise another one. Why is that? There's no eggs. It's too old. Too old to the larvae is too old. Maybe it never was there. Not going to happen. They're not going to raise another one. They don't have eggs or larvae to raise another queen. So they're done for and, unless you intervene. So having a queen that dies, you have to be on the ball with that. In other words, you need to know every two weeks if you have a queen in there. So I want you to go to your colony every two weeks during the beekeeping season when it's warm, above 60, 65, do your inspections. Don't freak out if you can't find the queen and put eyes on her. I want you to look for eggs and larvae. Preferably, you need to see eggs. You need to see a lot of eggs. Eggs are gonna become larvae, larvae is gonna become pupae. So you need to make sure you see eggs. Now, if you don't like looking for eggs or if it's hard for you to look for eggs, let me give you some tips on that. Number one, get some good reader glasses. Doesn't matter what they look like. Go to Walmart, go to a, uh, you know, a pharmacy or something. Get number three reading glasses if you're farsighted and start being able to see eggs. Um, buy jeweler lenses that you can put down over your eyes. Take pictures with your cell phone of the brood and so that you can see Back in the house, you can look at it on your computer to see if those are eggs down in those cells. There's a lot of different ways that you can overcome some of the challenges of trying to see those tiny eggs. But look, you have got to be able to see eggs. You really do. You've got to be able to evaluate eggs and larvae. Uh, put that in your uh, toolbox. That's a skill that you have to develop. It's fun. Don't get discouraged. I know some of you probably are thinking, gosh, this beekeeping is harder than I thought. I got to look for eggs. I don't think I can do that. My eyes aren't good. I'm old. Ah, hey, I get it. I, I'm farsighted. I don't see up close well at all. I've got to have eye support. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I do. I just get uh, stronger reading glasses out there, and then I put them on. I can see in there. Get better lighting. But look, it's a fun skill. I want you to take beekeeping I want you to go really into it with, hey, I want to learn some things this year. I want to learn to do some things that I need to be doing better. Now, once you are able to identify those eggs and see it or not see it, then you know what to do next. You can start taking the, the uh, additional effort that you need to put into it to say, uh-oh, I don't see a queen in here. I don't have any eggs. I don't have any larvae. And they're not raising a new one. So boom, I'm going to buy me a queen, right? That's what the problem's that I feel that we're facing right now. 
a lot of new beekeepers are finding it hard to know when to buy a new queen. And when they do, they're finding it hard to find a place to buy it from. They have to be shipped. A lot of beekeepers lose their bees early in the year where most of the queens are put into packages or nucleuses and they're not able to be sent to you. So you can come out of winter with a, a hive that's you know, still there, but they're queenless and you're not gonna be able to find a queen in most places in uh, coming out of winter. So if you can find a way to learn the art of raising your own queens, and I'm not talking about necessarily for mass production, you know, I'm not telling you to make 100 queens a week, but maybe you wanna have a couple of a nukes sitting around with a backup queen in them. Oh my gosh, that will help you so much. Now, I've, I've started this series on helping you learn how to raise your own queens. If you can learn to raise your own queens, it will just change your whole view of beekeeping. It will make beekeeping so much easier for you. I assure you, when I started raising queens, it transformed my beekeeping operation. I could have all the hives I wanted to because all I needed to do was to increase my hives were to pull one frame out with bees on it and give it a queen, a queen cell. Yeah, I, I literally remember one time I wanted to, when I first started the idea of selling nucleuses a decade or so ago, maybe more, I thought, how do I make a nucleus in the spring? So what I did was I quickly raised some um, queens and then when those queens were capped over, uh, maybe around day 12 or 13, I went out there and I took maybe those, I think it was 30 at that time, I took 30 queen cells. I went to an overwinter colony that had 30 frames in it. Follow me on this, stay with me, 30 frames. It had two deeps and a super. And there were bees all throughout those 30 frames. You know what I did? I went out there with 30 uh, five frame nukes and I put one frame of brood, I took it out of the big hive, so I made 30 nucleuses with one frame. Well, and 10 of them were medium frames and they added comb on the bottom. <laughs> but I put a queen cell in all 30 of those. And you know, it didn't take a month in the spring for me to have right in front of me 30 nucleuses that I was selling for maybe 150 bucks back then. Wow, I mean, that was awesome. And I, I experimented, I started telling people my you know, my secret recipe of raising these nucleuses like this. And I said, look, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna scoop up one cup of bees and I'm gonna put them on five frames of undrawn foundation and give them a queen cell. Would you, would you believe it? In no time at all, that cup of bees had started drawing out comb and laying eggs and filled that five frame uh, nucleus up in no time. I was so excited to learn what you can do with a cup of bees and a queen cell that I raised myself. You know, I, I grafted it, I made my own uh, queen cells. So that's what's so exciting. Now you might think, oh, you know, I'm just keeping bees for the honey, I don't wanna get into queen rearing, I'll just buy a queen. Okay, that's fine. If, if that's the route you wanna go, but get ready because you're likely to have a, a queen event. That queen event will kill your honey production. It will just knock it out. And you'll be thinking, this is my third year keeping bees and I still don't have any honey to show for it. It's because you keep having queen events and you don't have the ability to raise your own queens or have some queens banked and ready to replace a queen when she starts failing. So as beekeepers, it's important that you really learn to notice a problem with your queen more quickly. And once you notice that, that that queen is failing, she's doing poorly, or she failed altogether, then you gotta drop a new queen in there. And if you have one already, then you can put it in a queen cage with a little marshmallow or some candy behind it, and then you can punch her right into that colony that desperately needs a queen, has no way to raise one. That's in your hands, and that way you don't have these big gaps in the brood workers, or you don't have a scenario where they have to use precocious bees. That's when bees start are performing tasks in their hive when they're not old enough to do it yet. In other words, sometimes when a queen fails and uh, a lot of the foragers died off uh, of old age, but now the younger bees aren't old enough to go forage, 
but they do it anyway. And they're not really good foragers. They kind of get by, but enough, not enough stuff is coming in. Resources aren't coming in to really take care of all the other stuff that needs to happen, like feeding larvae. Precocious bees, it's, it's when bees start performing tasks before they're old enough and they do a poor job. And a lot of times that will cause the colony just to continue to domino effect down to be a very poor and just a total disaster and fail in the future. So when you think about the queen in our series about queen rearing, I want you to think about uh, the human body. The human body has the heart. Our physical heart operates our cardiovascular system. And anytime something happens to our heart, a serious problem, we're in jeopardy. I mean, we are in a critical situation. If you have a heart attack or your, your heart isn't performing correctly, you just can't get blood and oxygen moved around to all the organs of the body. The heart is the heart of the human body. In beekeeping, the queen is the heart of the colony. In other words, she is the one that's causing everything to work perfectly. Let's view all the different ages and stages of the bees and what they perform. It is up to her to lay eggs continually so that there's no, over, there's no gaps, that she's producing brood that overlaps the nurse bees. Nurse bees are nursing the larvae by giving them royal jelly between six and 12 days old. And when they get 12 and 13 days old, they don't produce royal jelly anymore. Guess what? The queen, the heart of the colony did her job. And now she's bringing in that workforce of nurse bees that keep replacing them. When on day 13, when nurse bees drop out a certain number, a certain number are right there ready to take over. On day 23, when foragers start flying out, you know, they, they start getting their wings on day 23 and start foraging. Well, they're going to start dying on day 35 of old age. So on day 35, there's more bees. The number that die off on day 35 of foragers, there's that same number, if not more, foragers coming and replacing them. You see how, boy, that works so well. Day 12 to 17, wax makers. They're building comb. When they get 18 and 19 days old, they're not building comb anymore. Well, guess what? Here comes that workforce ready to replace them. So that's why we cannot afford a queen event. Queen events lead to colony failure to some degree. Either it gets weak and poor, it's just gonna make you have to feed it more, or it just dies out altogether. That's why I want you guys to have a backup queen. I want you to have a backup plan. I want you to raise your own queens. You need a queen in the bullpen, warming up. In case something happens, you can just take that failing queen out, drop the new queen in in a queen cage behind some candy, let them accept her and release her, and then you're back in business. You don't have to wait 30 days. You might have to just wait three days. You're only gonna have a three-day brood break. That's not bad at all. So I'm encouraged to get you guys involved in this YouTube series that I'm making now on queen rearing, the importance of queen. We're talking about a lot of things here. I have a giveaway for you. Look at this. Those of you that are excited about raising queens, look at this wheel. This wheel, you can adjust it and it helps you with the timing of raising queens. I'm gonna talk more about the timing in my, in my next video that I'm gonna make, but this is all about setting it so you can determine when you need to do different things in raising your queen. I'm gonna give this away today. All you have to do is leave a comment below. Tell me what you like about my series on queen rearing. Leave a comment below, not really long, but just mention the word queen rearing down below in the comment section and I'll randomly pick a winner of this wheel. Gotta be in the 48 states so I can ship it to you. Still excited about seeing you guys at Hive Live coming up January the 5th over in Tennessee. So I'm hoping that a lot of you will come up to me and let me know you are a subscriber to my channel and introduce yourself. Sherry and I have both to be there. We'll, be, we'll have our own little booth. We'll be autographing. We're bringing our books and uh, you, you know, get a book if you want to. If you already have a book, bring it. We'll autograph it. Be a chance for us just to enjoy talking to you and meeting you in person. So if you are still wanting to go to the Hive Life event, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below and you might be put on a wait list. I think there's 1,700 beekeepers that are going to be there. But by all means, get on the wait list. Somebody's bound to cancel, things happen, and you might still be able to go. Now, this series on queen rearing just started a few videos ago. 
I'll take you back to the very first one in case you're just checking in. Start with this one and get caught up. I'll see you over there.